Welcome to the fifth video in a series of tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. In this video, we will cover the initial calibration verification for the GRAB method in detail, including the requirements for primary standard analysis, as well as documentation using the DEP form. The purpose of the initial calibration verification procedure is to verify the accuracy of the factory programmed calibration curve in each instrument. Each meter or titrator used for the collection of regulatory data or comparative grab sampling must successfully complete this procedure. The initial calibration verification needs to be completed for each analysis range that is used for data collection or comparative sampling. Each analysis range uses its own calibration curve, so each range must be verified. The initial verification only needs to be completed once per meter and range. The exception is any time the meter is serviced or recalibrated, then the initial verification must be repeated. The initial calibration verification requires aqueous primary check standards at a minimum of three concentrations. There are a few additional requirements of the method for the standard concentrations. The standard with the lowest concentration must be less than or equal to 0.2 mg per liter. The remaining concentrations should span the analysis range of the method to ensure accuracy across the entire calibration curve. The measured concentration of each standard must be within plus or minus 15% of the reference concentration or the true value of the prepared standard. This table shows how you would plan your three primary standard dilutions for a method with a range up to 2.00 mg per liter. The first standard must be less than or equal to 0.20 mg per liter. You may want the second standard concentration to be in the middle of the range, or between 0.2 mg per liter and 1.0 mg per liter, and the third standard would be up to the upper limit of the range, or between 1.0 mg per liter and 2.0 mg per liter. Use the DEP form for the GRAB method initial calibration verification for documentation. I'll be referencing this form throughout this video. Remember this and all of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. You'll want to begin by completing Part 1, General Information. Record your PWS ID, system name, the date the initial verification is conducted, the name of the analyst conducting the verification, and the analyzer, manufacturer, model, and serial number. Part 2, Standard Calibration, is where you will record your verification. You should begin by analyzing a method blank. The method blank is used to account for any interference from the DPD reagent. Your method blank result is recorded in this space on the form. Let's review the method blank procedure. The procedure for determining a method blank involves following the procedure for the chosen method with the exception of the sample matrix. In other words, rather than using water that may or may not contain chlorine, use reagent-grade water that does not contain chlorine. Remember to zero before adding DPD reagent. Even though you are using blank water, it must be treated just like a sample. Then add reagent, mix according to the published procedure, and read the result. Because we know there is no chlorine present in the reagent water, any measured concentration that is detected will be attributable to the presence of DPD. This value will be subtracted from our measured concentrations in order to produce a corrected concentration that is a more accurate assessment of the concentration of chlorine. The interference caused by the DPD can vary from lot to lot. It is recommended that each new lot of reagent be analyzed for a method blank to determine the impact on measured chlorine concentration. The method blank concentration must be less than or equal to one-third of the concentration of the lowest standard used to initially verify the calibration curve. Method 334.0 requires that the lowest concentration calibration standard must be at or below 0.2 mg per liter or the minimum chlorine residual required by the state. So if the lowest concentration standard is 0.20 mg per liter, the method blank must be less than 0.067 mg per liter. 
Once you have measured and recorded your method blank, move on to your three primary standards at three different concentrations. The steps to calculate and prepare your diluted standards were covered in the video on standards. A job aid on calculating and preparing dilutions is available at the link shown, which can be found in the video description below. Remember, the diluted primary standards are not very stable and the concentration degrades quickly after they are prepared, so it is best to prepare and analyze one before moving on to the next one. Record the reference and measured concentrations of each standard. The reference concentration is the true value of the prepared primary standard. The measured concentration is the result that is determined from the analysis of that standard. Then the math is just like the demonstration of accuracy from the IDC. Subtract the method blank from each measured concentration to calculate the corrected concentration. Then calculate the percent difference as indicated by the calculation on the form. Let's take a closer look at the percent difference calculation. B minus A divided by A times 100%, where A is the reference concentration or true concentration, and B is the corrected concentration. The percent difference must be within plus or minus 15% of the true value or reference concentration. Check either yes or no to indicate whether each standard met this criteria. If the percent difference is not within plus or minus 15%, the analyst should evaluate his or her analytical techniques and procedures to determine whether a source of error can be determined and addressed, and the initial calibration procedure repeated. If the analyst is not able to successfully complete the initial verification, the instrument may need to be evaluated or recalibrated by the manufacturer. Here are a few tips to help you eliminate sources of error. Make sure all reagents are from the same lot so they are all designed for the same sample size and have the same degree of interference. Use a two-step rinsing process between analyses. Start by thoroughly rinsing your sample cell with distilled water to remove all traces of residual reagent. Then rinse it again with a small volume of prepared standard to displace the remaining distilled water. This will eliminate any unwanted dilution of the standard being analyzed. Measure your meniscus carefully to make sure that the volume of sample you are analyzing is appropriate and consistent for each individual analysis. Make sure you are consistent with how you analyze each sample. Be sure to zero in between each sample. Now let's look at an example to help you see the initial calibration verification process and documentation. First, in this example, the method blank measured concentration was 0.00 mg per liter. Here are the calibration check standard concentrations that were prepared. Remember, the lowest standard needs to be less than or equal to 0.2 mg per liter, and the other two standards should span the analysis range of the method. Here is what was measured for each of the primary standards. Since the method blank was zero, the corrected concentrations are the same as the measured concentrations. Now we calculate the percent difference for each. Remember the formula is at the top of the column. You can see that they are all within plus or minus 15%. So this is an example of a completed initial calibration verification form. Be sure to record whether your calculated percent difference is positive, plus, or negative, minus. A plus or positive percent difference indicates that it is higher than the reference concentration, while a minus or negative percent difference indicates that it is lower than the reference concentration. This can be valuable information to track, to look for a trend that your instrument's calibration curve is drifting over time as you continue with routine calibration checks, which we will look at in the next video. If all three standards meet the acceptance criteria of plus or minus 15%, the instrument has passed the initial calibration verification and can now be used for analysis of compliance samples. You need to maintain a copy of your initial calibration form. The only way to document that it was completed is to be able to produce a copy of this completed form. You may want to maintain a binder to contain all of your important Method 334.0 documents. Let's review the key points from this video. The initial calibration verification is a required component of Method 334.0.
It evaluates the accuracy of the manufacturer programmed calibration curve of each instrument and must be completed once per instrument unless it is returned to the manufacturer for recalibration or service. The initial verification uses three primary standard concentrations at three different values that span the range of the method. For documentation, you can use the DEP record keeping form for the initial verification. This form, as well as the other Method 334.0 forms, can be found on DEP's eLibrary. In the next video in this series, we will review routine calibration verifications for the GRAB method, required by Method 334.0.